This video is going to be one of my most special videos I've ever made. Tonight, I'm staying out in the middle of nowhere under Bortle 2 skies in Yosemite National Park, California. So come along with me as I photograph the Milky Way from some of the darkest skies you'll ever see. Typically every video I have to complain about my Bortle 9 city skies from my backyard since I live 20 minutes away from Chicago. If you've watched my videos before, I'm sure that's no surprise to you. But these skies are dark. As I mentioned earlier, it is a Bortle 2 bordering a 1 here in Yosemite, with the actual value of light pollution being only 0.01 SQM away from Cherry Springs State Park. Funny enough, the Cherry Springs Star Party is actually happening right now as I'm filming this. This is the reason I couldn't go to Cherry Springs this year. Even though I'm not at Cherry Springs, I'm pretty happy with where I am right now. So as you can see, this is the house. It's really cool, actually. You got the turret up there, and it's pretty big. I mean, it's a pretty comfortable area. And the spot that I'm going to be shooting in is a little bit different from where I've ever shot before, even when I'm traveling. So this house is in an area of Yosemite where the bear threat is actually pretty high. There are bears sighted all around this area of the park, and there are actually some other Airbnbs that are pretty close to here with people in them. So due to it being super dark, and this is my first night here, I'm going to be shooting from the balcony of this house that I'm in. Conveniently, there's a balcony on this house that's facing exactly south where the Milky Way is going to be. There's a pretty big tree that's blocking the area of the sky where the Milky Way will be when it's rising, but I'm planning to get the Milky Way when it's setting earlier in the morning hours, like around 12 to 1 a.m. I am actually so excited about this. So the plan is going to be just to shoot the Milky Way core for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the foreground later. Probably going to use either half Half Dome or El Capitan. I'm really winging it on this trip. Normally I have a specific plan for what I'm gonna do, but I don't really know how the night's gonna turn out. I've, I've only been at this location for less than a day, so we're gonna see how this goes. But all I know is that this place is absolutely gorgeous. So you can see behind me a little bit, this balcony here, that, that is where I'm gonna be shooting my stuff from. I wish it worked out a little better where that big tree wasn't there, but I'm gonna take what I can get. If you're new to landscape astrophotography, it is very rarely an actual picture you're seeing that is 100% real. It's almost always a composite, at least the good ones are. What that means is you take one separate image that's stacked of the night sky where it's tracked and you got your big rig and everything, and then you take a separate image of where you want your foreground to be, and you position that onto the image of the night sky. And big surprise, that's what I'm gonna be doing Doing tonight. Just having El Capitan right outside the house on the balcony, it's too good to be true. So I gotta take advantage of that. For those of you that don't know, El Capitan is a summit in Yosemite that was used for many years for the Apple Mac computer's desktop background. Uh, if you've seen this image, that's what that is. So I can see that right outside the balcony. I'll take you guys to that in a few minutes. So that is definitely the main attraction for tonight. But I mean, it's it's gorgeous. Let me, let me show you guys this. So here you have the house. That's the shooting location but it's just field upon field of absolutely nothing. And then you guys are just not gonna believe this view. I'm coming around the other side of the house here to show you what we have in our front yard. That right there is El Capitan and right behind it over there is Half Dome. Absolutely incredible. And then of course we have mysterious campers that we have no idea if anyone's actually in there or just not a great place to be outside when it's pitch black and you don't know what's around you. But yeah, I mean, I can't stop just looking at everything and how gorgeous it is.
so it's been a little bit it's been about an hour there's exactly five minutes until sunset it is starting to get dark out here i can see the crescent moon setting over the horizon and the anticipation is building right now the last glimpses of sunset is fading away on those high peaks of the mountains off in the distance and I am so ready to get shooting. So I'm gonna be doing a little testing in the early hours of the night until the Milky Way rises. It should come across the trees at about midnight, I wanna say, but I'm willing to stay up as long as it takes tonight to get some insane shots. If you don't know the gear I'm gonna be shooting with, I'm gonna be using my Skywatcher Star Adventurer alongside my Canon EOS R, probably for the main shot, and my Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F1.8 lens. Some of you who have been longtime subscribers to this channel may remember my video where I went to Wisconsin and shot the Milky Way and did a little tutorial on how to shoot the Milky Way wide field. If you're wondering about that video or maybe you want to see a tutorial on the exact way I'm going to shoot the Milky Way tonight, click on this video here and it'll take you to that video there. But yeah, I mean the last bird calls of the day are dying out. Besides that, there is nothing here. There isn't a highway or a road for that matter or a waterfall or any sort of town, definitely not, within miles and miles and miles, dozens of miles from this location. So so the only sounds you can hear right now are birds. And once those go away, it is literally true silence. I can hear bees buzzing probably 15 feet away. I mean, I've never heard anything this quiet before. So the actual plan for tonight, what the heck am I gonna actually do to get this picture? Well, I'm gonna set up my stuff up on the balcony there. And once it gets dark, I'm gonna plan to shoot around probably 30 to 45 second at the max exposures of the Milky Way. I'm planning on getting about 15 of those. That's overkill. You don't need that many. You probably need six seven max, but it's always good to have more data than you need. With deep sky projects, you need hours and hours and hours of exposure time to get some really good detail you can process out. But from these dark skies where the Milky Way arches over, there's very limited intense processing that you're going to be doing. So your exposures can be short and you can have a couple of them only and you can get a really solid image of the Milky Way. So the sun has officially set and you know what that means. It's time to start getting set up. So without further ado, let's get the gear ready to go. halfway done setting up my gear here on the on the upper deck and I just realized there's a section of the lower deck where the Milky Way is going to rise over for just a little bit it's going to peek over the mountains right as it's rising so I'm going to grab all my stuff and scurry down there and get set up there and then once the Milky Way is done rising over the peaks of the hills and the mountains over there I'm going to move it back up here so quick interruption we're resuming downstairs <music> We are fully set up. It's not even close to being fully dark. It's about, what is it, 9.30, probably five minutes past uh, an hour after sunset. Oh my God, it is unbelievable. It's literally life-changing. This, this kind of thing, if you have never seen dark skies before and you go out to a location like this and this is your first time seeing a dark sky, it is literally life-changing. So what happened last night here as uh, I got here 
in the evening, so I was able to take a look at the skies overnight. It was clear the whole day, and then as soon as night rolled around, clouds came in over the mountains and really blocked everything out. I got a few pictures here and there, but it was mostly overcast. And I'm not noticing that yet. I can see faint clouds over the mountains there, but I, I don't think it's gonna happen again. I totally jinxed myself there, but fingers crossed. So as you can see, I'm really at the back, um, or maybe you can't see, I'm really at the back corner of a deck here. Uh, we have the whole deck that stretches out um, across the house, and I'm, I'm really positioned at the back end of it. Up there is where Polaris is gonna be. That might, might actually be Polaris. And out here is where I'm gonna be shooting. I'm gonna increase this shutter speed for a minute here, so you can see. Out here is where I'm gonna be shooting the Milky Way. Um, that's a lot brighter than how it looks here. As you can see, car headlights are on the mountains. So the Milky Way is gonna rise over here. I actually think it's it's over there right now. I think that's Antares. And I'm gonna be getting that super soon because it is getting to be that time. So as the night progresses, I'm gonna be updating you guys on how everything's going. Obviously for the first sub-exposure of the Milky Way that comes in, I'll film that too, but it's gonna be periodical check-ins. I'm so excited. Let's do this. It is 10, 10 p.m. You know what that means. It's time to get our first shot of the Milky Way. It is out there, so you can't see much, but right in there is the Milky Way rising over the hill there. This is not, I will make a very clear disclaimer here, this is not my fancy schmancy setup. This is the Canon M50 with a kit lens. So I have it on the Star Adventure, I'm all polar aligned. It's been on where the Milky Way is gonna be for some time now. And start. Any second now, we'll be done. Here it is. Oh my God. There it is. I mean, it's noisy. It's not great. But it's there. The Milky Way. I stayed up almost until sunrise, capturing the Milky Way and taking in the true, absolute darkness of the night sky there. From the total silence, to the wobbly wooden deck, to the occasional bear in the distance, this was unlike anything I've ever experienced. If you're fortunate enough to have an opportunity like this, I strongly urge you to take advantage of it. And maybe, just maybe, you'll have yourself a clear night and you'll get to experience one of the darkest nights on Earth.